The time is now. The time is now for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This is our review. We will be spoiler free for most of this review. When we get into spoilers, you will be fairly warned. In addition, we will not be doing spoilers that involve the very end of the movie. I think that would ruin the experience of the film. I'm talking about the very, very end of the movie. Yeah, so, I think we're just going to spoil some details, but not yeah, not the ending, not how it ends. Now, now, last week when you were on the show with Dante and the two of you had were fresh from seeing the film, you didn't really give many details of the story. Mm-hmm. Let's get in. Let's get into the details of the story. It kicks off with a drunken and irresponsible Star Lord. Peter Quill is is just distraught over Gamora, probably over recent events as well. So when you see that shot of Peter being carried by Nebula, it's well, he's you know, he's all passed out from being drunk. He then emerges from this stupor when he realizes uh, that his friend Rocket has been injured and uh, maybe mortally wounded on the brink of death. This this then precipitates a series of uh, flashbacks to the origins of Rocket Raccoon, who began life as, you know, you guessed it, a cute little baby raccoon who is then surgically altered along with other animals, including a walrus, a rabbit, and um, what was the other creature? Oh, was an, like otter. A, an otter. An otter. And they're all surgically altered with uh, to be slightly different. Their, their intelligence is increased. And you see Rocket as he goes through this process and makes friends with the animals that are being experimented on. Yeah, I should mention it's the high evolutionary who is experimenting. Yes. The high evolutionary is the person conducting these experiments to make a better society. He doesn't want to take over the galaxy. He doesn't want to destroy the world. He just wants to make a better society. I think the high evolutionary might be the best Marvel villain since Thanos. He dwarfs Jonathan Majors as Kang. I'm sorry. This guy um, experimenting on animals. Uh, he's a guy with the like, you know, he doesn't consider himself evil because he's trying to do good, which a lot of people in the world who think they're trying to do something good, I think are kind of evil. Might James Gunn be saying something? Who knows? But a lot of people who think they're doing good are actually doing evil things. And and so you see through a series of, of flashbacks, you see Rocket's origins, and uh, it's heart-wrenching. In addition, you'll, you'll see um, that the absence of Rocket is felt. In the first half of the movie, the absence of Rocket amongst the team is felt in a strong way. And I think because of these flashbacks, you really understand why Rocket is, you know, the way he is. He's bitter. He's angry. He doesn't like being pushed around. Uh, there's a reason he's been that way through not just two films, but other appearances in Marvel movies. Uh, this explains everything. So that I think was incredibly well done. Everyone is different in this film too. Peter is distraught. Uh, Nebula is different. You know, she's now more interested in doing better things. She's changed by her experiences. Uh, We finally meet Gamora later in the story as they go to pull off a heist, which is to find this chip that will basically... um, This is a data file that unlocks... Yes. uh, Rocket, not a chip uh, basically that's right not a chip it's a data file that that will basically unlock the ability to heal rocket so he won't die so uh they're on a mission to get that data file and through that they enlist the aid of gamora who is not gamora from the previous guardians films at all Com- she's she's gamora pre meeting peter quill all of this makes for interesting drama. What I like is, at least for the first half of the movie, it's it, the, this film is less jokey in tone 
than the previous Guardians movies. It's far more serious. It's darker, more adult. I would even say that some of the scenes involving the the animals and uh, there's there's a uh, there's a a plot in like the second half of the movie involving child trafficking, which I find interesting in a Disney movie. Uh, child children being used and they're going to populate some new world, uh, you know, like I, I just found all of this. And it's interesting is like, it's there if you look for it, but it doesn't ever feel preachy in the way that James Gunn is presenting it. But I felt that what I liked about this is that the stakes seemed real. Whereas many of the recent Marvel films in particular, like Thor just felt like nothing mattered. And Black Panther, where it was just like so much bad CG, it didn't feel rooted in reality. So, and, and I will say this, a, a little little side notes, just things that stood out to me. What I liked about this film too is they may have used the volume to shoot. It didn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. it so many of these other previous, especially Ant-Man, felt like they just shot it on a soundstage. They just shot it in the volume. There's something about it that, I mean, there's like this scene where like Peter Quill on this new world is driving like a car. And I loved it. It was like this, it's like a reproduction of earth, but with evolved, evolved animals. Yeah. It's, it's like, 60s here. We're, we're talking the sixties here. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. idyllic, like fifties, sixties, like suburban life. And they go to this planet. It's just like, you know, they're, they're like physical sets where they go to this sort of biological, um, uh, it's not a planet, but what was that thing that where they had to pull off the heist? To get the data for oh, it's the celestial's head nowhere. No, no, no. It's it's a bio planet basically. It's a bio planet where they go uh, inside a bio of lab it. or a bio moon. It was it was created out of biological material. Yeah, and it, it so they go inside of it. That part was so cool. It was like part. It felt like part Doctor Who. It felt like part Barbarella with the weird Nathan Fillion as the security guard in that weird security guard outfit that was so yeah. over the top. I just love the production design. Yeah. Oh, and contrast that with Quantum Mania. Right. Uh, and you and you know who the better world builder is between James Gunn and Peyton Peyton Reed. Just well, I think that you know James Gunn is inspired by the comics, but makes it practical and real world so that like bio sphere environment was so bizarre i love that whole sequence with the heist uh, the interplay between drax and mantis mantis is just she's so precious i really i feel like i have a crush on mantis to be honest <laughs> if i ever meet a woman in mantis cosplay uh <sighs> <laughs> oh, no. my beating heart anyways uh she is what i even loved about mantis was like not just the way she talks and her interplay with drax uh, you know th their reactions but um even when they went out in the um the little at colorful astronaut uniforms like she's spinning around she's like moving differently than everyone else because she has this sort of la 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 la, like almost like a, like a childlike fascination with everything she encounters. I, her character is, I, I think she was great from the beginning, but like she's really just fully formed in this. It's it's awesome. But what I loved is she, uh, the, just, she really ramps it up in the holiday special. Yes, uh, no, and, drag. Which are, and there's a reference to the holiday special at the end, which I thought was fantastic. Not a spoiler; it's just reference that. It occurred. Yeah. So uh we can go through more. I don't I don't want to like go story wise beat by beat. I'm gonna tell you the things that I really loved. And I just love that there were serious stakes in this, that things mattered, that it wasn't the fate of the universe, not just the universe, the multiverse. It's the world. Like, how much bigger can you go? This is a personal story about their friend being in a crisis and rocket. It's life or death stakes. Yeah. And and there are times you see characters, there are just, uh, there, there felt, it felt like things mattered. It didn't feel um, like, ah, oh, and we're going to make a joke. No one's stopping to make a joke in the middle of serious dramatic circumstances. 
in particular, and I also think that this film, it's, and and look, I, I'm, I'm just going to uh, cut to the chase. I really love this film. I'm surprised. I like it. The more I thought about it, the more I enjoyed it. And I was resisting it. I was just like, God, Marvel has just been like, it's just been so disappointing lately. I just wasn't, I wasn't even really, I just wanted to get it over with and go, nah, you know, I'm sure it's, but at the same time, at, after having seen it, I was like, I'm surprised how much I really enjoyed it. And I plan to see it again this weekend. So I don't know what that tells you. I really enjoyed it. Um, there are problems with it. We'll get into the problems, but there was so much. I could just go on and on about a list of things that I enjoyed about the film. Uh, I'll, we'll get into the flaws and the faults in, in a minute, but I want to hear your thoughts, Alan, now that you can yeah. speak more freely and we're still going to be no spoilers for, for a while now. And, and we will go to your comments before spoilers. So Alan, your, your general thoughts now that you can yeah. like get into the story and more. Yeah, I mean, I, I really liked it. Uh, again, it's my third favorite. Um, I, what Fair. I, what I appreciate about this specific story is it is the completion of the character arc. That is the guardians of the galaxy. The first movie was about a, a team of selfish people doing a job to get money uh, and, you know, and, and to somehow become a team. Uh, and the second movie is kind of this development of the Guardians as a family, that that they are the only people on in the universe who treat each other as family and loved as a family. And this one is, I think, the most poignant because it's about the Guardians now fighting for one of their own and being self being selfless and putting their lives on the line to save to save Rocket. And so that's where, you know, and so if you take the three volumes, you know, you have a full and complete character arc. And I think that's, I think that's why people are saying it's too dark. Uh, I don't know that it is. Uh, I I think it's just the fact that it's it's a much more heartfelt story. Uh, you know, it has real stakes to deal with. It's also you know the goodbye of the Guardians, and I think that's why people are saying it's not like the first two. It's darker than the first two. It, it has to be. It, it, without going this dark, you don't really get to the heart of what who the Guardians are, uh, and. And I, I just, I, I, without spoiling the ending, uh, I love how it ended. I, I, you know, in terms of the fact that this team's no longer going to exist, uh, and then the way they, they, they set set things in motion to make that happen, and where they left the team, uh, I think just works. And and it it does it in a way that, you know, I hear people talking about what they might do and what they might do, and and to know that they got it all completely wrong is uh is is kind of the fun of of having listened to the criticisms of this movie uh for the last week uh when when no one saw it until yesterday so yeah i i really do like the movie uh, i i think the guardians uh you know it's it's going to be the last good marvel you're going to see for a very long time and so take it in soak it in have fun well um i i, I feel bad that i agree with you it's the last good marvel we're going to see for quite some time until we see james gunn's superman which will be a very good superman marvel movie uh which could very well be the case i look i i i enjoy this much more than i thought i would because the film took itself seriously because while it is funny and there are jokes the jokes are made appropriately instead of taking serious circumstances and diminishing those circumstances, diminishing the drama by adding humor at, at an inopportune moment. And I, I appreciated that this movie showed restraint. The, the things that didn't work for me, the running time, this could easily have been cut. I feel like you could have cut this to a tighter, closer to two hours. It's two hours, 30 minutes. You feel it. The second half gets overly long. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could have, you know, cut down to the essence of things. I'm sure there's, you know, look, it's a two and a half hour version. There exists a three and a half hour assembly. I, I promise you yeah. that exists. Well, I mean, I felt like there are a lot of side stories, especially the child trafficking side story that is like, I mean, they complete it. They they complete that story, which begins midway through the movie. And I'm right. Like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, we, we got to suffer. Not that we had to suffer through it, but it's like, 
Oh, this is going to extend this this ending out a, a long time. Well, I feel like there was the child trafficking and the experimental animals. You could have cut one. I would have yeah. cut the child trafficking. To be honest, like like you could have cut all of that out and just kept it to the animals, and that would have been enough. It might have felt a little forced, but um, you know, as much as like the child trafficking thing was kind of yeah interesting. Uh, and it, it was, it was okay, but like you, you really could have cut all of that. I feel like this movie could have been a tight two hours. It really could have. Um, the other thing is, is Adam Warlock. If you're aware of who Adam Warlock is in the comics, you're going to be very disappointed. If you've never heard of Adam Warlock, you're not going to, you know, you, you probably won't care. It won't matter to you. I actually like Will Poulter, like what he did with it. Like I thought it was interesting. He's sort of like, a newborn, you know, he yeah. was basically born to get revenge against the guardians and take them out. And it, it gets a little tiresome. So, uh, but you know, yeah, but I mean, look, uh, I, I understand why fans of Adam Warlock are upset with what they do with Adam Warlock, but the reality is also, there's never going to be an Adam Warlock movie and there's never going to be an Adam Warlock television series. And so, so that's what Marvel has done since the very beginning is they take very good characters, you know, and reduce them to, you know, basically comedy, comedy characters. I mean, Taskmaster for crying out loud. Yeah. Uh, what they did to Taskmaster was I was infuriated because I love the Taskmaster and and uh, and they they've ruined a perfectly good character that could have done so much for the Marvel Universe. And, uh, you know, so this is part for the course. You know, these are characters that only true fans really care about, and Marvel doesn't care that true fans really care about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I what's weird is I think you can do this. This is a weird thing. You can sort of like compartmentalize this in your head. Is Adam Warlock in the comics exists, and that's cool. Adam Warlock now exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think they're like two different characters as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. If you, you look at them, it's it's almost like Adam Warlock in the movies, in, in, in James Gunn's movie, is inspired by Adam Warlock from the comics, but is not the comic character at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas some of some other characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe very much feel like the characters from the comics. I feel like they did not do Adam Warlock justice at yeah. all. Uh, well, from it's like... The if if you take Man of Steel and didn't call it a Superman movie, I think Man of Steel would have been a good movie. Um, right. You know, the same thing here is, uh, you know, it's a good character. Uh, it it serves a point in the story and is pivotal in the end. Um, but did you have to make it Adam Warlock? See, exactly. So, I mean, this character fulfilled a role, which was to disrupt the, the Guardians. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah. To you be know, an overwhelming threat against the Guardians. Exactly. An overwhelming threat that, you know, brings near death to, to some of the characters. So there you are. But uh, I, uh, I I just feel that there's a better movie that's at two hours. I would... Uh, so look, if we're, if we're in the non-spoiler territory before we get to your comments, let me just say this is... I really enjoyed this film much better than I thought I, I would. I did actually get choked up a couple times in the film. I did not expect that at all. Did not expect. I didn't cry like uh, other people I was with cried. You were sitting next to Kevin Smith? No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did get choked up. Like, look, to me, to me, Harming children and animals, that is pure evil. Anyone who would do that, the harming of children, animals, that's horrifying. You're an evil person. And so to see that on, on screen, it's not, I, I will say this, I don't think it's gratuitous, but it's there. And I think if I was a kid, if I saw this as a kid, single digit age, I think this could be provoke nightmares, especially the at, you know, the, the way that the walrus has like these wheels, <laughs> the rabbit has like these spider legs. Yeah. This is, this is apparently out of the comics. I, I don't, I did not see that in the comics, but um, good on James Gunn for pushing it 
There is a, uh, you know, uh, Star Lord says fuck, and it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm not gonna ruin what he says. It. It. It's great. I love, I love how it came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. And the thing, the thing is, this he pushed this as close to an R-rated Marvel movie as you could possibly go yeah. without showing nudity. And the thing is, there was no, no, like I, you know, people will. Maybe people, uh, I didn't feel, feel there was anything that was overly woke in it at all. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's not that. I, I feel like, the, I, I don't know, there was just like so much to love and a lot of nitpicks. You know, uh, the running time. Uh, I think the child trafficking subplot could have been, you could have, you could have lost that. Mm-hmm. You really could have like you could have run through it faster than than they did, or run through it quicker. Yeah. There was just maybe a better way. I, I well, like. Well, that's what I'm saying is the 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 third act, which is the last half of the movie, had yes five or six had five or six endings to it. Yes, uh, and and it was just like wow, this is. I mean, again, I, I you know. This is again. This is the last good Marvel you're going to see for a very long time, and 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 quite frankly, I'm very hopeful for what DC is going to bring us. And I'm, I'm not going to obviously. I don't think I have to tell you to stay through all of the credits. It's a Marvel movie. You should definitely do that. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about. We're not going to talk about that yet. But um, what I love with the credits was that it looked like an the back of an album. Mm -hmm. There are all these like photos, not just from you know from like the production. So there's like photos and they're like with tape on, like it's taped onto something. And it felt like we were looking at the back of an album. And as a kid that grew up with albums and then cassettes and whatever, before we got CDs, I, you would put on an album and you would just read the back and you would, you would open the, and even better if it was like a fold out, like Star Wars, and you would read all of that stuff. Like you would just absorb it while listening. Mm -hmm. And that's what it felt like with the credits, like looking at these pictures, like yeah. sort of in character, out of character. It really was closing the book. It's, I don't see how yeah, you make these characters we had literally grown up, grown up on. But <laughs> I agree. I Maybe literally is the wrong word to use. But. I don't see. I mean, you could make another Guardians movie or the Guardians could appear in another movie. I hope they don't. I hope mm -hmm. this is like close the chapter make something new, but I don't see when you look at the lineup, especially because the high evolutionary, what's the name of the actor who plays the high evolutionary? If you could look uh, that up, Alan. I know it's yeah. the name that cannot be pronounced. I've uh, seen him before in other things. And I'm, he, I'm, was, he was in, oh, Peacemaker. Yeah. He's in I Peacemaker. mean, it's basically the James Gunn crew is all over this. Yeah. His wife is uh, in it. Like she was fine. She, you know, Chuck Woody Iwaji Iwaji. Wait, wait, wait. Could you could you try to pronounce? <laughs> I know you're gonna do the same. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not. I'm not feeding the the clip machine. To the Alan, machine. how do you pronounce I'm not the actor? The clip how do you, Alan, Alan, Woody Iwaji. Okay. No, how do you pronounce the actor who plays the High Evolutionary? How do you pronounce his name? I don't know. How do you pronounce the actor who played the High Evolutionary? One more time, Alan. No, no, we're we're done. All right. I know these are traps. <laughs> the trap. Uh yeah, he was so good. Like how do you I, I don't know, I thought he was a very good villain. It makes some I mean, if Jonathan you, Majors as Kang look weak. You you have a character here who has a clear motivation for what he is doing. And that right there is gold for an actor. Right. You know, it's, it's, you know, you know exactly how to play this. There's so much nuance to this character. It's again, uh, you just give a description and an actor can have a field day with it. Um, you know, there's too much mystery revolving King, you know, I, you know, even now I still don't, I still don't really understand what he's going for and why we're leading up to this big, big Avengers Kang dynasty thing. If that's ever going to happen again. Uh, so you know, this is, you know, it's, it's, you know, you have a villain, you know what they want and you know why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, that's all we ask. That's all we ask. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just feel like with Kang, it's a big mystery and I don't mm -hmm. know that I care. They haven't made me care enough. Whereas every time you saw Thanos on the screen for like a half a second, you'd go, Ooh, it's Thanos. And then he was gone. So yeah. 
And then they paid it off. They paid, they paid it off perfectly. They paid the it movie. off. It was so. And then you know Thanos shows up as a character in you know the first Guardians, and you're mm-hmm. like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. Thanos is here. This is it's yeah. it's great. And, it's- and then the opening scene of Avengers: Infinity War it just lays out the menace that Thanos is. Thanos is. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, look. Here, here's what I'll say. It was. Uh, I'll say I liked this film a little better than Guardians Two. Uh, so I I would um I would rate this like a seven and a half or an eight, sort of in that range, mm-hmm. and and uh I would recommend it. In fact, I do plan to see it again. And I was surprised that I enjoyed it. Part of that might be that there's been such a lull since No yeah. Way Home that like and the Marvel movies have been so disappointing that now here's a watchable fun <laughs> Marvel movie that has stakes with drama with characters I care about and it's good and I'm shocked. Yeah. You know what it is? Is that Marvel has been so bad over the last few years that the worst parts of Guardians of the Galaxy is now amplified. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, just, you know, uh, just watching some of the, uh, the streams that have been going on, you know, they've, they've already declared this a failure, even though the movie hadn't come out yet and, uh, a box office failure. And I'm like, you know, I, I think we're pulling the trigger on that one too early, but, uh, you know, it, it's just, we are so tired of what Marvel has done, what Disney has done to, to, to this great franchise that uh, again, the, the the weaknesses are just being amplified. 